When I'm going to work on the weaver for the day, I always wake up about two hours early because I'm anticipating what we're gonna be doing for the day. I, I love being on that river every single minute I can, whether it's for work or for angling. It's just a, it's just a great place to kind of go and collect your thoughts. Um, and it's where I go if I, if I need to uh, just unwind. really gives my life and my career a sense of purpose and I feel like you know I'm, I'm able to provide a benefit for future generations that my little boy will be able to go out and fish for for a Bonneville cutthroat trout and my little girl will, will have an opportunity to see a bluehead sucker. fishing the Weaver River. This is the fish we're after. Beautiful bluehead sucker. This looks like a probably a female. So this is an adult fish. They get up about 20 inches in length. But one of the characteristics of a bluehead sucker is they have these cartilaginous ridges in the mouth. And these are for scraping. So these suckers sit on the bottom and they scrape algae off of rocks. One of the issues we're seeing here in the Weaver River is while they are congregating and spawning, we're having a difficult time finding juvenile fish. They kind of show the health of the Weaver River. As the number of blueheads go, the health of the Weaver River goes. So we're trying to protect this fish and increase their numbers, show that we have a healthy ecosystem here in the Weaver. We were struggling managing fish populations in the Weaver River, specifically these Bonneville cutthroat trout and bluehead sucker. There's a multiple irrigation diversions that were issues. And what we realized is really nobody understood where we were coming from. So the development of the Weaver River Partnership was an opportunity for everyone to get together, tell their story, tell where their interests are and what is important to them. And then they started understanding why the, these two fish are important in the Weaver River. In 2011, the Western Native Trout Initiative and the Desert Fish Habitat Partnership, which are two national fish habitat partnerships unified under this nationwide effort called the National Fish Habitat Action Plan, we were asked to help fund three fish habitat restoration projects in the Weber River in about an 18-mile stretch of river near Ogden, Utah. And these three structures had been identified in the watershed plan as being both inefficient for water users, but also what we call barriers to fish passage. So by funding these projects and this, this effective partnership, we were able to both restore the, the native fish habitat and also um, restore better efficiency to the water users. Bonneville cutthroat trout we have in the Weaver River, especially in the lower Weaver River, are, are what we call a fluvial life history form. So they grow large in the Weaver River and then they need to find tributaries to access to, to spawn. Once they spawn, those eggs rear and hatch in the tributary stream and those fish will remain in that stream for one or two years until they're of sufficient size to get flushed back out into the Weaver River where they'll grow large and then seek their own tributaries for spawning. So access to these tributary streams in the lower Weaver River is what is critical for these Bonneville cutthroat trout to complete their life history needs. Yeah, the most important thing that we can do as a community to make that happen is to form partnerships that are rooted in collaboration. Healthy rivers make healthy economics and healthy economics can help provide healthy rivers for this community. And the important thing is that this community values these rivers and that's exactly what we do. We have tremendous uh, value here. We recognize it as a community. Our city leaders recognize it and we want to take steps to make sure that we uh, protect, conserve, and restore those resources wherever we can. Our partnership 
is something that's important because having a lot of folks that have a similar interest in improving not only the river but the but the species that live in the river is something that's that's important to Pacific Corps that we're a part of and that we believe is working really well. I mean nobody wants a list of species but I think that when a conservation organization like ours or like PWR comes into and meets with a landowner or meets with a, a, a water company and has, has a genuine um, interest in, in working with them and, and helping solve problems, then I think that's actually providing that catalyst. That's actually bringing people together because we're not propagating conflict. We're actually trying to develop cooperation and collaborating on shared solutions.